<laughs> Welcome to Alphabet City. This is the show that covers everything related to Alphabet Inc. Alphabet just so happens to own lots of companies, including Google. I'm your guide, Aya Zaktar, and you are the spectacular audience. Today, we're talking about Google's problems with the US government, pixel stuff, some intrigue about Google Home Hub, and your comments. But first, let's talk about a new Palm product, really. Let's head on over to Android Avenue. Palm is back, sort of. There's a new Palm device headed to Verizon, and it's meant to be a sidekick to your current phone. You cannot buy it by itself. Instead, it pairs up with your existing phone number and requires its own $10 per month plan. Look at this little thing. It's running Android Oreo, has access to the full Google Play Store, has a tiny 3.3 inch screen, a 12 megapixel camera on the back with an 8 megapixel camera on the front. Now, why would anyone grab one of these Palm devices? It's aimed to be used when you're at the gym or just when you want to sort of disconnect. By the way, the Palm name is being licensed by TCL to a startup based in San Francisco. If you want the teeny tiny Palm device, it'll cost you around $350. Do you think devices like this will catch on or is it just going to be like a footnote in the history of cell phones? Very curious to know what you think. In an interview with that excellent tech site, CNET.com, Samsung CEO DJ Ko said that the company's future folding phone will be usable as a tablet. Once it's folded, it can be a phone. Ko also explained that, quote, when we deliver a foldable phone, it has to be really meaningful to our customer, end quote. Samsung's boss also said that the foldable phone won't be a gimmick and will be available worldwide. Did we talk about the Samsung Galaxy A9 yet? No? Well, let's do it. It's the world's first phone with four rear cameras. Take a look at it. 128 gigabytes of storage, which can be expanded with a micro SD card, six or eight gigabytes of RAM, 6.3 inch AMOLED screen, fingerprint sensor. It is a mid-range phone, so it gets a mid-range processor. Let's run down those four cameras. Eight megapixel ultra wide camera, 10 megapixel telephoto cam with 2X optical zoom, 24 megapixel main camera, and a five megapixel depth sensor. Now, why would you put four cameras on the back of a phone? Because five would be ridiculous. Until it isn't, next year. Time to go to Pixel Park. Alrighty, if you watched the Pixel live stream, you might have seen this very show at the beginning, including our producer, Rich Peterson's amazing leaky Pixel artwork. That was neat. That being said, let's quickly run down what Google announced on Pixel Day, October 9th, since we've had time to digest everything that's happened. We've got the two new Pixels, and the leaks were right. There's the Pixel 2 XL Mini and Notchzilla, otherwise known as the Pixel 3 and Pixel 3 XL. Internally, the two are almost identical except for the battery capacity. Both have the same features, so you get to choose whether you want a bigger battery with the notch screen or not. I tried out both, and they were zippy. Both have OLED screens made by a manufacturer that Google would not tell me about. I will say that in my limited time with the Pixels, there did not appear to be any obvious screen issues like the Pixel 2 XL. Let's forget about the hardware. The software was the real star of Google's presentation. The new Pixels get some cool features first, like call screening, dibs on duplex, and cool camera features like Top Shot and Night Sight. Top Shot essentially makes sure you do not get a mistimed photo. Google says you'll never need to use your flash again with its Night Sight low light photo feature. That's a bold claim. A lot of those features are heading to older Pixels too. That should give people incentive to pick up a Pixel knowing that eventually it'll keep getting improvements. Pricing info ahead. Pixel 3 starts at $799 for the 64 gigabyte model, $899 for the 128. 899 will also get you the 64 gigabyte model of the 3XL. $999 gets you the 128. I wish it had more storage, but them's the breaks. Check out the full reviews at CNET.com. Let us now talk about the Google Home Hub. It's like the Google Home with a screen. Here's the thing, it's only 20 bucks more than the Home without a screen. It's a smart display similar to the Lenovo smart display and the JBL Link View. Those two devices run a version of Android called Android Things meant for Internet of Things devices. Ars Technica found out that Google Home Hub does not run Android Things. Instead, it is built on Google Cast. Ars Technica asked, why would Google do this? Google VP of Product Management, Dia Jolly said, quote, there's no particular reason. We just felt we could bring the experience to bear with Cast, and the experiences are the same. We would have easily given the third parties Cast if they wanted it, but I think most developers are comfortable using Android things, end quote. 
Yeah, so that makes like no sense. There's something going on here with Google and its hub, something fishy. Nine to five, Google did some further digging and tied the hub to Google's Fuchsia operating system. Fuchsia has been rumored to replace Android in the future. That does not mean hub runs Fuchsia, but a version of it might have at some point. That's intriguing. There's also a new Chromecast and the Pixel Slate Chrome OS tablet. The Slate is really well built. Its pricing starts at around $600 and can balloon up all the way to $1,600 before you get any accessories. It runs Linux apps, by the way. Next up, the Garden of Google. So there was a security issue with Google. It turns out there was a flaw in Google Plus that exposed the personal data of up to half a million people between 2015 and March of 2018. Google did not disclose the vulnerability when it fixed the problem in March. Now, why is that? According to a Wall Street Journal report, the reason Google did not tell anyone about this issue was to prevent scrutiny by lawmakers and to avoid harm to its reputation. Google said in a blog post that it found no evidence that any developer was aware of this bug or abusing the API and found no evidence that any profile data was misused. Google is planning to shut down Google+. The social network will head to the great offline by the end of August 2019. Three senators sent a letter to Google CEO Sundar Pichai that basically asks, when did you find out about this problem? What did you do to fix it? Why didn't you tell anyone about it until way later? Are there other incidents like this that you're not telling us about? And lastly, give us that internal memo that the journal mentioned. There's even more government stuff. Google CEO Sundar Pichai sent a letter to US senators talking about Dragonfly the censored search engine for China. In the letter, Pichai says, we are approaching these issues deliberately, and whether we would or could release a search service in China remains unclear. He went on to say, quote, accordingly, we are not in a position to be able to answer detailed questions, end quote. Senator Mark Warner of Virginia was none too happy with the letter. Senator Warner said, quote, I was really disappointed with Google's response to our letter. Google owes us some honest answers, or it risks losing the trust of Congress and the public." End quote. That is some heavy stuff. Time to go to Comet Cove. This is the part of the show where we shine a spotlight at the most amazing audience in the world. You guys. 2012 Big Perm says of the Google Home Hub, no camera intentionally for privacy concerns, LMFAO. You don't believe that, do you? It's cheaper, period, or just put a shutter over the lens. That's a good point. I'm sure Google brought up the privacy part to make the company look good. As for making a cheaper product, I'm sure that played a big factor too. Luke says, still sticking with my 2XL, but I do hope some of these non-hardware updates come down to last year's models, like Top Shot, Night Sight, and adjustable depth of field. Thanks, Luke. Yeah, older pixels will get plenty of software updates. I am curious how well they will work on the older hardware. Let's talk a little bit about that slate. The keyboard accessory costs around $200. The dyer asks, how is that keyboard more expensive than the hub? You know what? I asked a Google rep the same question. The response was something like this. Well, they're different products. That's all I got from them. Thanks to everyone for writing in. If you've enjoyed your stay in Alphabet City, please like and subscribe. Also, I know we haven't covered stuff outside of Google for a while. We will handle that in the next episode. I'm Aya Zaktar, and I'll see you online. Oh, you're still here. Do you want some more news? You're on. YouTube TV is getting a new feature, a full DVR. In the past, if you recorded a show using YouTube TV, after a while, that recording would be replaced with a video on demand version with unskippable ads. Now that won't happen. Oh, also, you know about that instant translation feature in Pixel Buds? It's coming to other headphones that use Google Assistant, including some from Bose and Sony. That's it for us.